Toronto FC have loaned out Io Akinola to the San Jose Earthquakes for the remainder of the 2023 season with an option to buy for the 2024 season in exchange for an international roster spot. Io Akinola, a once very promising young prospect for Toronto FC, has turned into one of the team's most tumultuous strikers. A guy who over time has gotten onto the fan base's bad side, a guy who just has not lived up to expectation, a guy who has had some massive injury derailments and just some bad luck throughout the career, just leading to him not panning out the way anyone really expected him to. Ayo Akinola's first team Toronto FC career started in 2018 when he made four appearances in MLS and two in the Canadian Championship, scoring in one of those two Canadian Championship matches. He'd see an increase in playtime in 2019, making eight MLS appearances, scoring one goal, and over overall making 11 appearances in all competitions. However, his big break came in 2020, where Io Akinola exploded off the start of the MLS is back tournament, scoring five goals in the first two matches of the MLS is back tournament group stage, going on to over the course of that whole season, tying Alejandro Pozuelo for the team lead in goals with nine. Following that MLS is back tournament, the expectations for Akinola reached sky high levels. Levels. He was reportedly being scouted by high-level teams in Europe. Top six English clubs were reportedly looking at the young striker. He earned a call-up to the U.S. national team for their December 2020 friendlies and then earned call-ups to the Canadian national team in 2021, being a dual national. Both the U.S. and Canadian national teams were fighting over him and both wanted what looked like a very promising striker. The 2021 MLS season led to the Chris Armas era for Toronto. FC. And while Toronto FC was terrible in the start of that season under Chris Armas, Ayo Akinola was not bad under the new manager. He scored three goals through the first 11 games of that season, was looking pretty good, and earned himself a call-up to the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup for Canada, where he would become captain tied for Canada, but in a group stage match against the United States, Akinola would go down with an ACL injury, which resulted in him missing almost an entire year of playtime. Akinola returned to play a couple months into the 2022 season, but it was clear that he was not at the level as he was pre-injury. He scored two goals in 26 MLS games. However, he did have two goals against CF Montreal in the semifinals of the Canadian Championship, putting up a good brace, allowing Toronto to advance to the finals of the Canadian Championship. But despite that one good game, Io Akinola just did not reach the heights that he had pre-injury. Which brings us to now, the 2023 season, where Io Akinola, through 15 matches in all competitions, has zero goals, and he just has looked terrible on the field for Toronto FC. It really is tragic. A once highly touted prospect has completely fallen out of starting contention at all for a Toronto FC team that doesn't even really have a true number one striker. But the thing about Io Akinola that just is so mind-boggling is remove that MLS is back tournament. Remove the MLS is back tournament group stage and his best season ever becomes four goals in 12 games in 2020. No more than four in a single season. And yes, four goals in 12 games is actually still a decent number. It is apparent that he did build up a lot of good faith in those first two games of the MLS's back tournament when everyone was just coming back from being off from even training for a couple of months because of the pandemic. So was Io Akinola ever actually really good for Toronto FC? Like removing the MLS's back tournament. In 2020 and 2021, besides the MLS's back tournament, his goal scoring totals weren't incredible. They weren't even really good. But at least out on the pitch, he looked like a promising player. Like he looked like a player who could become something. He looked like a player who had potential, had potential to be a nice, strong striker up front who, with a bit more development, could start potting in goals more regularly. The injury definitely derailed that and made him lose a lot of his confidence and he never really regained the physicality or the confidence he had pre-injury. But it's not like even before the injury he was scoring at incredible rates or was a true number one striker in MLS at that point. So that leaves us to the move. We go now, he's being loaned out to the San Jose Earthquake. And like, for Io Akinola, a move is probably good. He's a guy who needs a change of scenery. Will that help him? Who knows? For the San Jose Earthquakes, 
why? Like, I don't really understand why the San Jose Earthquakes would want him at this point. Like, they've seen that he's not performing at an MLS level with Toronto FC. So it is weird for them to be taking a flyer. I mean, they do only need to give up an international roster spot. So that's not a huge give up, but it is weird that another MLS team would want Io Akinola at this point. Maybe they think that a change of scenery could spark a return to 2021, 2024 for Io Akinola. So that is possible, but it, it does stump me a little bit as to why another MLS team thinks they need current Io Akinola in their lineup. The international roster spot that Toronto FC is getting back. So in my Mark Anthony K. Latif Blessing trade video, I said that we got an international roster spot in addition to Latif Blessing that was probably gonna be used to pick up a international player. Apparently that had to be used on Latif Blessing because I was under the impression that he had a US green card, which meant that he didn't count as an international player, but on Canadian teams having a US green card, even if you played in the US, doesn't get you off international player status. It is just one of those wild, weird MLS rules that don't really make much sense because in the US, he wouldn't count as an international player, but in Canada he does, or maybe I read the wrong source and he doesn't actually have a US green card, whatever. Anyways, Latif Blessing required an international roster spot for Toronto FC, so the spot that we acquired in that trade for Mark Anthony K was just to fit Latif Blessing onto the roster. So now we actually get an international roster spot which will likely be used to pretty soon bring in another international player. Now rumor has it that that international spot's gonna be used to pick up Cassius Melula, who is a 22 year old South African forward slash winger slash midfielder. He can do it all, but he had a pretty decent season last year in the South African top flight. So he could be an interesting pickup for Toronto FC. And right now he seems to be the only name on the target list. So it seems like that might be what that spot gets used for. But for the main part of this move, this is the end of the Io Akinola era at Toronto FC. Okay, well, if he doesn't pick up form in San Jose, he could get sent back to Toronto FC when the loan ends if they don't pick up the option to buy. But this looks like, for now at least, the end of Io Akinola at Toronto FC. It's been a wild ride, but I don't think many people are very sad to see him go. So, that is it for this video. As always, if you like to hit like, if you want to see some more of my stuff, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, link is down below in the description, and I will see you next time.